Hello friends, welcome to our today's session. In this series, we are learning data engineering with Databricks. And in our today's video, we will cover one of the functions that has been recently introduced by Databricks, which will improve the performance. So here is the problem statement that we are going to use for our today's demo. So I have a couple of columns and uh, I have a request column from my data input. And uh, if you closely look into it, uh, this is of type string, but it is in the format of JSON. So this is a JSON formatted string column. And uh, what I need is to, I wanted to convert this string column into a proper uh, struct type columns uh, so that I can flatten the data and do the analytics on top of it. So we had already seen this use case in our earlier videos, uh, but now uh, Databricks has come up with the function uh, which will be really faster and have an improved performance and also it is uh, uh, easy to use. So let us see what that function is all about and how the performance improvements plays a vital role here. That being said, uh, let us move on to our today's demo. We are into my Databricks Community Edition account. I have already created a notebook and also started the cluster. One point that we need to make sure is like the runtime version that we need to use is uh, should be 13.2 or else later uh, since the function that we are going to see is introduced only in 13.2. Uh, here I am choosing 13.3 LTS version. So that should be fine. Uh, please make a note of that and let us move ahead. Uh, before moving ahead, I would request you all watching this video to give a like to this video if you really like my contents and also provide your comments or feedbacks uh, if you need any topics that has to be covered in our video uh, that will be helpful for me to make a next video so that being said let us move ahead so the data set that we are going to take today uh, is something related to uh, latitude and longitude information uh, something like uh, consider it is coming from uh, IOT we will have a date status and then the request and the uh, status will have whether there is a uh, error or else a success message and then uh, what is the response that we are getting to that request so that's what the information we will have and inside the request we will have uh, what is the response message ID and where the latitude and longitude is located. So this is what the information that we are going to get. And uh, since it is a CSV file, I am going to read it as a CSV file itself. But before reading it, I have to set a couple of options. One is to escape the double quotes that is inside the file, uh, inside the column itself. And uh, also it is a multi-lined. So I do not I do want to set the multi-lined option as well as true. So this is how it goes and also I am creating a temp view which we will use in the later stage. So I have created a, a data frame out of the input that we had. So let us uh, see the data set, the input data set that we have and uh, also let me describe it. So you could see the request column uh, which is our problem statement. It is of type string. And also one thing that you have to notice, I have a couple of records, uh, but both are not in the same schema. Like uh, in the first row, I do have a error status, but the schema is different. Like I'm missing the latitude and longitude where I need null to be as a output. And uh, for the second for the second row, I do have all the columns that I need. So I should make sure my uh, output should have all these three columns. Uh, let us see how we can uh, solve that. So as I said, we had already seen uh, how to deal with the JSON uh, string columns. If you had missed that video, I will give it an I button as well as in description. Go ahead and see that. We had discussed about JSON tuple, from JSON to JSON. So those functions, how it works internally. Uh, but for now, I'm going to use from JSON alone. So how we will uh, convert it? Let me run through each and every steps and explain you guys. So what we are doing is we will get the input schema uh, from the request column that we have. So for that, we will be using RDD. So 
uh, we are going to use park dot read dot json and we are passing the only the request column alone and converting it as a rdd and then getting the schema of that so this is how we will get the schema uh, if you are aware of the schema we can directly give it but uh, in some cases we in most of the cases we will not be aware of the schema and the schema changes that is in the json string so it will be very difficult to track so in those cases we have to be dynamic and we have to generate the schema on the go on the runtime so this will be helpful and uh, the generated schema has to be passed to the from json function so in the inside from json i am giving the first column as request i mean the column name and the second one is a schema that has been generated so this is how we will convert it so it is already converted and let me display it so the output has been displayed you can see like uh, uh, with the method with this method i am able to convert the json string column into a struct type so this is how also it has handled uh, uh, the scenario that i had told like the first row even though the value is not there for latitude it has taken it as null so that is also been taken care but here the challenge is like we are using rdd so data frame is converted into rdd so which we all know like this is a slow process uh, to get the schema so uh, the entire uh, data set will be converted as rdd and then the consolidated uh, json schema will be displayed so this is a very very slow approach i mean performance wise it will impact if there is a huge volume of data since we have a couple of records this is fine but if we have a huge volume of data this will have a greater impact on the performance so for that what we can do uh, there comes the second method or else the new function that has been introduced by databricks so there is a function called uh, schema of json agg aggregate so what this function does is it will uh, take a input as a column of a string uh, which is in the json format and it will read through all the data and it will give me the consolidated aggregated json schema so let me run this command for you so here i am doing select a, uh, schema of json as a function and then i am using the request column and uh, giving the input uh, temp table that we have created earlier so you can see this is giving me the dml uh, structure of the request column so here you can see it is consolidated like even though my first record has uh, don't have a latitude and longitude it has consolidated and it has giving giving me the uh, aggregated uh, json schema so this schema we can leverage it and use it in our from json so instead of uh, converting it as a rdd and then getting the schema giving back to the from json we can directly run a select statement uh, which is a databricks sql command uh, i mean the databricks sql function and we can get the schema and uh, we will pass that schema into the from json method so here you can see i am again uh, giving a with column and i am giving a column name as struct data and using the function from json S same the re request will be the column name and uh, schema underscore j is the uh, schema that i have generated using schema of json aggregate method so let me run this and also display the output as well so obviously the output is going to be same for both the methods that we had seen today so it has taken care and uh, performance wise if you see i have a couple of records but when i am converting it using the schema of json it has took only 90.95 uh, seconds but whereas uh, when i use the aggregate uh, using uh, rdd uh, it has took around 1.75 uh, i had made some benchmarks uh, initially it took around 3 seconds and uh, uh, 2 seconds even for a couple of records which is uh, uh, way more than uh, what i thought uh, so performance wise this is very very good uh, improvement like if you are using a json string and you wanted to convert it uh, please go ahead and make a changes with a schema of json aggregate so this will be really handy and helpful uh, when it comes to the performance hope you guys uh, understood this uh, try this in your own machine and let me know if you face any issues i am happy to help you guys uh, please do subscribe to my channel 
and also give a thumbs up signal if you really like my content thank you for watching